असलकुम जी Hello everyone assalamu alaikum this is APPS UK the association of pakistani physicians and surgeons based in UK thank you very much for joining us it is good to see you all my name is shaista miraj and i'm a radiologist at royal bolton hospital uk today APPS is honored to welcome our highly esteemed speaker dr arshad taki president of pakistan medical commission pmc pmc was formerly known as PMDC Pakistan Medical and Dental Council It was a long and arduous process when PMDC was dissolved and restored as PMC and this created much anxiety among Pakistani medical professionals including newly qualified doctors So in this symposium today we aim to clarify some of those burning questions and also we will discuss the um what challenges pmc has in defining and implementing the regulations for medical and dental profession in pakistan and we will also discuss how pmc can help us overseas doctors pakistani doctors overseas pakistani doctors in renewing our pmc registration with me i have my co-hosts today um dr irfan rashid who will introduce himself please Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Miraj. My name is Irfan Rashid, and uh, I'm a social secretary of uh, Apps UK. Uh, I'm currently working uh, in Bradford, United Kingdom, and I'm a, a GP with a special interest uh, in pediatrics, and also a graduate of uh, Allah Akbar Medical College, as uh, Dr. Thaki is. So, welcome. Thank you very much, and I have Dr. Saeed Ali Raza with me. Uh, thank you. I am Dr. Syed Ali Raza. I am consultant oncologist currently working at the Mid Yorkshire NHS Trust, and I'm brand ambassador of Apps UK as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to invite Mr. Shakil Puri, President of APPS UK, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shaista. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and welcome all uh, to another uh, very useful and uh, everybody's looking forward to this symposium. uh which doctors are watching all across the world uh particularly from UK and Europe um and um, uh, Dr Thaki we are very thankful in advance for your time and are looking forward to hear your um golden pearls of uh, scholarly thoughts so we can then be more confident about um our members doctors who want and give their services to Pakistan nation I must uh, add one little comment here. Apps UK is one of the we are the largest and the longest established medical professional organization in United Kingdom and we would like to work with all the provinces, all the medical colleges and all the alumni of a uh, medical fraternity in Pakistan and we are very very proud to have you Mr President amongst us today and we look forward to hear and learn uh, what your plans are. and to assist you with these plans where and when required thank you thank you very much we um have dr shahid sharif with us who is um the vice chair of apps uk he'll also say a few words thank you assalamu alaikum everyone i am dr shahid sharif and uh, first of all i welcome uh, dr arshad taki and i congratulate him for uh, becoming the president of the Pakistan Medical Commission and we are uh, hoping uh, that uh, we will have great um, achievements uh, during this and uh, APPS UK will be working all the time um, in uh, all the areas where we can help to help the Pakistani doctors and uh, in Pakistan and also overseas in UK so we are available and uh, there will be few things we will be talking about today so i let um, dr arshad taki talk about what his plans are thank you very much thank you i uh, would going to have a brief introduction from our panelists as well um so dr ishfaq ahmed hello hi can you hear me yes yes, thank you. yes so um, i work as a consultant in emergency medicine and acute medicine in united kingdom 
and uh, I graduated from Bakai Medical College in 2004. I've been actively involved in academic teachings and I've trained more than 5,000 doctors in the United Kingdom. Uh, most of them are international medical graduates. So I'll be talking about uh, issues to the IMGs we have. Thank you very much for your time. Um, and uh, we have Dr. Abdurrahman Shahid with us. Uh, dear Assalamu alaikum. Um, Dr. Abdurrahman Shahid from Germany, uh, working in uh, Big A Emergency and Trauma Center, which is well renowned in Germany and Europe. And um, yes, I have did my emergency medicine specialty and now I'm doing in anesthesiology. And I'm also a social worker and helping <laughs> like uh, uh, together with Apps UK and some integrated professionals. So yes, from my side. Thank you very much. And we have Dr. Abdul Hafiz. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Bilfis, um, the CEO of Association of Pakistani Physicians and Surgeons of UK. I graduated uh, from Aga Khan University. Um, I'm based here in Manchester for the last uh, 21 years. I also sit on a General Medical Council, which is the counterpart of PMDC or PMC now in, in UK. And I've been sitting on their BME forum for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, so there has been a lot of interactions with previous management of uh, PMDC, and obviously this will continue uh, with the new leadership. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, everyone, for your time. And um, to the uh, audience, to the viewers, please do share this um, Facebook live stream with your friends and colleagues. Thank you for that. I'm now very pleased to invite Dr. Ashit Thaki um, to give us the current situation at PMC and what challenges and plans are lying ahead. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Slava uh, uh, It indeed, indeed is an honor and a pleasure, and particularly the pleasure that you let me meet my old friend, Dr. Shahid Sharif. It's been how many years, Shahid? Oh, it's he uh, spent six years. Yeah, it's uh, maybe, maybe 20, yeah. 25 to more than 25 years. Hmm. No, it's 25. You're, you're, you're kidding. Yeah. It's been <laughs> a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, see, we spent we spent countless numbers of a uh, number of hours in the cafeteria, Lama yeah. Iqbal Medical yeah. College, six yeah. years together. So it's it's a pleasure coming back yeah. and meeting him. But uh, and and thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Uh, uh, so let's start, begin with Pakistan Medical Commission. A bit of a background, as you said, it was a stormy course. Uh, this uh, actually came to me as a surprise, but uh, uh, the ordinance itself, but it was actually enacted under some conditions of duress uh, because uh, the things were going haywire at that point in time and the government thought that they needed control to control the situation. Anyway, that's that's history. It was enacted through an ordinance. We we were brought in. We were asked to start cleaning the house. At that point in time, they uh, the old employees were fired, and that actually raised a bit of a storm. Uh, we engaged, started working with the new uh, staff, and the immediate uh, task that few tasks that we had assigned ourselves was first of all to uh, bring the operations back into 21st century from that centuries old way that they were being handled. Because the first thing that you talked about renewals and registrations, so that's where I begin. And that was the first thought that uh, task that we thought we would begin with because the doctors need to be facilitated and, uh, and that's the bottom line. But then, Fast forward, uh, there was this court orders and then another battles and eventually uh, once again, in the end, now this has become a law. So now we can talk about a more sustainable period, hopefully, and a period where the, all that uncertainty would be behind us. We are living a land of uh, a bit of uncertainties and a time of uncertainties, but within that given framework, we are, we are looking at a more stable period, hopefully. What this uh, this law aims to achieve is three, two things. A, uh, from that old philosophy of a council, which was of an elected body of the 
healthcare members of the profession, actually regulating the profession. Somehow with that mushroom growth of private medical colleges and that numbers became at some point probably outmoded, outdated. Uh, at least at, at that point in time, and since last eight years, it was felt that it was failing to actually uh, achieve its primary objective. And that primary objective, let me clarify my thought about it, is not really providing job to the doctors, which of course is very extremely important. Or The primary objective is of course, providing healthcare facilities to the doctors, to all the our population. I say that, and I say that kind of informally to friends who, with, with the, um, whom I can talk with a little more openness, is that in Pakistan, we talk about quackery. There is that subset of patient who is going to go to a, a faith healer when they get unwell. And that's not our problem. That's their choice. There is a subset of patient who is going to go to homeopaths, who is going to go to Hakim's. And that's a path that they choose. Our biggest problem is patients who go to the doctors, assuming that they will get a certain standard, uh, set, uh, standard of care according to those prescribed mm, methods. And uh, our biggest worry is that if the society loses that trust in the doctors, faith in the doctors, then we, we are having at a, uh, looking at a serious crisis and that needs to be addressed immediately. And as an extension of that, our graduates uh, need to be recognized globally as having gone through uh, a system where it, which ensures that they are their knowledge and their competence is at a certain level where it, which is ensured. So these are a few things which we needed to be looked at immediately. So the concept was changed and now the government decided to step in and then appoint their own regulators. So the first point is the thought was that that council was replaced by a commission, which is of course then entrusted to perform a certain task. And that commission consists of three branches because previously the council had all the powers concentrated in one body and one office, which was the office of the registrar and a council which was making decisions, but everything being implemented and controlled by the office, one office, and that was registrar. So now there is that trifurcation. There is, so I would begin with the medic, the academic board, which consists of representatives from the universities, private sector, public sector of the provinces and the federal federation. Some of the uh, representatives from the general uh, practice, some other doctors, uh, the College of Physici Physicians and Surgeons Pakistan. So it is a 20 member academic board whose job it is to set the standards and make recommendations and all the parameters for medical education, both under undergraduate and postgraduate education. The second uh, component is the medical authority, which are those paid professionals, a seven member authority, which includes a member licensing, a member education, a member examination, which are three, which are actually dealing with the quality and the controls of, uh, of education, examination, and the licensing. And then there are four members, other members, which means the legal, uh, finance, IT, and uh, administration. So these are those first seven member authority, which looks after the day-to-day prepares the budget, makes proposals and, and hires people. Everything from either from the academic board or from the medical authority comes to the council for approval. And that's where we sit. It's a nine member council. Uh, nine, uh, for the first time, they have got representation from the society. That's the biggest question mark that some of us, uh, some of our people uh, fail to digest and they think why are the non-doctors sitting on the council and they need to be uh, reminded that uh, society is a major stakeholder and that's all that process who are actually the recipients of all that uh, care and they need to be taken aboard on what kind of a doctor they want uh, and what what are they ex uh, their expectations from the profession. So this is that trifurcation of powers wherein the, the, the 
council does not have, does not directly, cannot directly intervene with the day-to-day -day affairs. They cannot tell the academic board what standards to, uh, to, to set, which are purely meant to be recommended by the board. And, but everything comes to them for approval. So they are setting the guidelines. They, are, they have got this, uh, their uh, oversight function. So that's the first thing that, that you see a trifurcation of the, of the authority in the, within the, this co uh, commission. So each one of them have their task. So that hopefully, once again, the, the, everything has been very clearly defined. Every role has been very clearly defined in the law. So we know what the council is supposed to, what their powers are, what their limitations are. Similarly, now uh, the second important difference that we find, see in the, from the previous council is that let's not forget the fact that the colleges are affiliated with, with the universities and it is the universities which are supposed to conduct the examinations, award the degrees. So they are the ones who are directly supervising education. And universities actually fall under the Higher Education Commission. So undergraduate education, actually, if you look at the, 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 what the reality should be is, are fall under the, uh, are the responsibility of the universities, which then should be looked at, uh, uh, kind of supervised by the Higher Education Commission, which by the way, regulates all other education in the country. But they, the, the task of regulating medical education was actually taken up, I would say, by Pakistan Medical and Dental Council. There were times and when, I, when, when we got involved and I started looking at the, the, some of those decisions which came before the council when they were looking at it, I could, as a doctor who have thus reasonable degree of reading and have been involved in some 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 academics could say that we did not really have the competence to do it was the, um, to deal with but then that's 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 what the history we are coming moving forward so what this law has determined is it has actually transferred the direct supervision of education to the universities and through the universities the universities fall under the higher education commission that's a major shift so which means that the faculties, uh, the actually Pakistan Medical Commission sets the standards for education, sets the criteria for faculty, what should be the qualification, what should be the experience, what is the minimum requisite for this uh, an undergraduate student to be taught and what should be the curriculum. However, then the implementation of that curriculum and implementation of all that is the responsibility of the, uh, of the universities and the higher education commission. So inspection of medical colleges, undergraduate medical colleges now would be the responsibility of higher education commission. There's, there's a bit of anxiety on that and that's what we're working on because our immediate task is to make sure that we help higher education commission develop that, uh, uh, that uh, the capacity to take over that task. We are actually having a meeting tomorrow and it will be followed by a series of meetings. And we'll continue that weaning period till and support till the time that everybody is satisfied that now they are, they are able to do that. But that's their job, they need to be doing, doing it. We need to be focusing on our job. And what is our job? Our, our job primarily is to issue licenses. So our job begins where the license the, the student passes an exam and goes for a license. So first major shift has been that now we realizing the ground reality and something in addressing the concern by many of the regulatory overseas regulatory authorities that there are now multiple universities, multiple colleges, all standards who are awarding those degrees. And there is just so much you can do to control them. Uh, and that control in any case rests with HEC. So the, the, in response to that, the, the commission would then be holding a licensing exam. We, are, we will start working on the modality of that licensing exam. And that licensing exam needs to be, was initially proposed to be held 
before the students got their house job, which means and immediately after their graduate exam. But now this has been kind of postponed till the end of their house job, one year house job, and they need to, before they get a full license, they need to pass that licensing exam. So that's a major shift. Uh, once again, the, the admission criteria for med into medical colleges, uh, so this once again has been standardized that there is going to be one national exam, which we are holding this year. Uh, this was a short time to, uh, kind of a um, uh, notice for us, but however, we have managed to get all the universities together, examining universities together, we got them together with National University of Medical Sciences, which is going to set this paper because at this time, we did not have the time and the capacity to prepare it ourselves, that would be next year. So we got them all together for the last last week, three week, three first three days, I was sitting with them personally for three days and actually agreeing on a current common syllabus curriculum for that exam so that uh, no student feels that they've been deprived because of this and everything is within that common curriculum. Uh, so, but there will be that one common exam at the level of entrance. So what we can do or what we intend to do is have a common standard at the entrance level and have one common exam at the exit level before we issue the license. So that's about undergraduate. Moving on, postgraduate exam at education and uh, all education is the responsibility of the commission because now we have a licensed doctor. So starting from house job, the hospitals need to be supervised. The hospital need to be inspected. The hospital need to be working at uh, their, uh, at a certain standard. Because what we realize is that uh, unless we improve the standards of teaching hospitals, we cannot actually improve the standard of medical education, undergraduate education and post postgraduate graduate education. So that's, that's a shift, which means that we will be focusing more on uh, doc doctors who hold the license, and for them. So that's that's one another component. How do we plan to go about it? Uh, first thing is that there is something that we need to be doing very, very urgently, and that is automation of this whole process. We need to get human factor out of this. The first test is going to be the our admission process. The law says that uh, private medical colleges would devise their own policy uh, for admission. There's been a lot of question mark on that question. Uh, and I understand that there have been problems with the way the students were admitted previously. And But then there was the central induction and we had a few tons of problems with the way that was handled as well. Uh, however, the law says that the private medical college, every medical college has to give their admission policy one year in advance which needs to be vetted by the commission and then they can implement that policy. So enough time for every student to know what the admission policy of this specific medical college is going to be. And every document is going to be a public document. Everything is on the website. So we are not going to have any secret files anymore, uh, except for any like inquiries or something which involve somebody's personal information. Uh, the second, uh, so um, um, this much about uh, the, the, so the, what we are, we, the challenge was that this year they did not have that one year in which to, to announce that. So we told them that we are going to have for the last time a central uh, admission. But for that, we have already started working and are devising, devising a portal wherein the students go apply on the portal and all the information is there on as public knowledge. So they go, they find what the colleges they are selecting They and they can select as many as they want. They select the college where their merit falls, any one of the many choices they have. And once they have selected, then the others become available to others and that process goes on for a certain period of time and then closes. So we are going to test that as our capacity to develop an IT solution during this, this period as well. Meanwhile, we're working on an IT solution wherein the day the student registers, 
they are registered with us. And then from there in that student gets a unique ID, which would of course then be uh, to given to every uh, licensed doctor as well. And then that unique ID stays with that student for the rest of their life till the time they leave their careers or, or decide to retire or whatever. So, is, so during this period, every each and every information actually is fed into the portal, into that, uh, uh, and there it keeps on adding to a person's information. So that means all the process of licensing, renewal, everything becomes automated and online, so nobody needs to go. For as an immediate effect, if you go on to our website, what you must may observe is that we have simplified the registration forms. We have taken a lot of those redundant information out of there, and the process has become it has been simplified as simplified as it could. For an, as an example, if you if a student wants a license. Uh, and they they produce the degree from the university. Now we no longer ask them to go and produce their FSC and metric degree and get it verified from the relevant board if we have got any objection. The university has done all the info, in, in, investigation about their uh, primary, basic, intermediate uh, school degrees. And we are actually issuing that license on the guarantee of the university, awarding university that this student got a genuine degree and we issue the license on the basis of that. So we are not going to ask for those, that information which was superfluous and which was which caused all this lots of bottlenecks. Uh, there were a few other areas which were actually delaying the process of li licensing and registration. And one interesting thing was an issue of, and that's interesting, and I want to share that with you because that would give you an insight into why and how things were being delayed. And I'm, I can't really blame it on any one, one individual or it was the whole system which needed some rethinking. And the problem was that particularly in public sector medical colleges and also in uh, uh, private medical colleges, sometimes the students in a certain class would exceed the allocated quota by determined by the commission. So when a college applies for recognition, they are awarded a certain quota of students each year based on their facilities that they, they uh, demonstrate. So what happened, what would happen was that they would exceed that quota. Private medical, public sector medical colleges because of certain people being admitted on certain quotas over and above those which were uh, uh, admitted on merit and the private sector medical college is actually admitting ex extra patients, uh, getting extra patients because of failures and patient students being detained from previous classes. Uh, so what, what would happen is that, that when that class, the, this university submitted the, uh, the students' names for registration, the PM, PMDC would actually then uh, have an objection on that excess number of students and that will cause a contention and delay their the student's registration. And sometimes that delay would go, be delayed to the extent that the student had graduated. Now, when we took over, what we realized that there were students who had cleared their uh, four year, five years of training had passed the exam and were awaiting their provisional licenses to start their house job had not even still being registered as students. And what PMDC would do was actually find the college for exceeding that limit and then still delaying those registrations. So those conflicts. So what we have done is we have made it clearly mandatory that we are not going to allow you under grand of, uh, under a grandfather clause. So all the previous ones are now being closed. And for the future, we are not allowing any, any of the medical colleges to have any students over that quota. So they have got their quota, they can only admit or retain students in a specific class in accordance with the quota they have. And if they think they qualify for more students, they need to go and submit themselves for, for registration. Another thing that happened was that in 2019, for the first time, there was a very comprehensive uh, 
inspection of all the colleges. And for the first time in the history, that involved inspection of the public sector medical colleges as well. And that was clearly accepted as that inspection actually involved not only examining their structures like so much office space and so many classrooms and so many hospital beds, but actually on how the students were being taught. So there was this emphasis on that. And uh, lo and behold, we actually got numbers and we got those percentages, which were some at times shocking. Um, and so, but then through a court order, some of those reports of those inspections were stopped from being public. And that court order has become now redundant. So we are going ahead and actually publishing those uh, reports, uh, those inspection reports, so that the students have a right to know that what college they are going into and what they are looking at. The colleges would know that from now onwards, their, their performance, their evaluation is public knowledge and they cannot hide it from anyone. That also gave us some clue to as to how public sector medical colleges are performing because uh, not due to anybody's any particular person's fault, but the fact is that their scores were consistently low because of lack of some very fundamental fac um, facilities like faculty uh, the, uh, number. So these are those, that's another area where we are working to, in order to share more information with the, everyone so that they can, they can uh, uh, make informed decisions about selecting their colleges. Postgraduate education, we've got, is another challenge for us. So A is that now we've got the College of Physicians and Surgeons Pakistan. We also have got universities awarding degrees. And through a process of central induction and central residency programs, now the students are ending, landing in the same unit, same department from two different sources, which means they, they, are, they are graduate, uh, receiving their grad, uh, postgraduate degrees from the universities as well as the college. So there would be four residents or five or six residents doing their FCPS and another six residents doing their MS or MD under the same supervisor in the same unit. So you, you could imagine that that's, uh, that's an area where we need to look at those issues. So that's, uh, I, I, I would rather give you more time for interaction, but one last thing that I need to say, so where do we, uh, our interaction fit in? Uh, my submission and then what you want of us or what you expect of us or how we can be facilitating is, would be coming from you and I'll be answering that question. What I request of you, and that's not, President PMC, as some as 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 a colleague, as a friend, who who has been looking at the way medical uh, our healthcare system has been evolving and uh, considered it off the record, on the record, whatever. The problem is that you people left, and you you were the big brains, you were the great ones, uh, you were the bright bright ones, and you went on and you did get proper trainings. You went to systems which of which are working in today's world. But there, then there was a disconnect because previously there, we were taught by a generation of doctors, professors who had gone abroad, trained, come back and taught us. So we assimilated, we kind of retained something of what they taught us. But then uh, this became more of a one-way traffic. And because of our certain unique restrictions, visa restrictions, restrictions on limited training slots, and then those financial incentives and all, uh, those who went there, we, we, went, we didn't have many people going there and working there for a limited time and getting those insight into how the world works and returning to actually uh, improve the system. So we started we have become more and more inward looking. And that is something I am sharing with you from my heart. It's not like just President PMC. I, I share that with all my colleagues at, uh, from, from, from my heart. And that's where we are, what, what we are looking at. Yes, of course, every colleague that I meet, every one of you wants to come back and impart. And that's great. 
but then you are coming here for limited times. What we need to do is have a critical mass of people going there, training there for a long enough to at least understand how those system works and come back with their visions, horizons broadened. And we are look, we need to have that critical mass because I'm afraid the people like me who have only been who, 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 who with that limited knowledge are becoming getting at the helm of affairs. So we unless something is done about it, we'll have uh, we, we we won't have many people with great insight to actually lead. And we need that number. And there we, I, I always seek help. That's where GMC comes in. That's where all the reg, uh, all of you come in. If you can somehow help us get that, get that number going there, training for a limited period, and somehow an assurance that they are not going to get permanent jobs there. They are going to be asked to go back and let's say work for at least five years. That's what I request of you. Now, I leave there. I hope I've clarified a few things and I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. Thank, Thank you, Dr. You Patil. Very I, much I, I, I just need to, um, sorry, Shasta, I will just uh, respond to that because it's, um, it's a direct request. Um, uh, Dr. Taki, thank you very much. We are uh, very glad of a person like yourself uh, who's so forward thinking has become the president of PMC and doing so much to uh, fast track uh, the processes. Uh, we are already doing uh, the training, uh, the, the type of training you mentioned with Pakistan Armed Forces. And inshallah, we can make it more formalized uh, in a formalized way. Um, I, now you've um, come to a stage and asked us what we can do for you. As the president of Association of Pakistani Physicians and Surgeons, I would like to formally request that we have a stock of very able clinicians, um, leaders and doctors all over the UK. Uh, and we can help with rules, regulations, scientific guidelines and standards. Would you please consider having a, a representation of uh, our organization uh, formally on an advisory basis in PMC, please? I'm sure this can be seriously taken up. There is no uh, bar to uh, PMC actually forming committees for the purpose of achieving specific tasks. And I don't see any reason that we can incorporate uh, uh, few people into those committees because uh, that's uh, so. So I, I, I don't see any reason and I would be too happy to recommend this to the board as well and use all our leverage to get this thing uh, kind of incorporated in the uh, thank in you the very much for uh, thank you very much for giving um, um, uh, a yes in principle uh, i congratulate congratulate apps uk um, for this that i know my members my board members ec ec members they really are always thinking of pakistan and they want to do something this will build the confidence of the medical professionals even further to go and do things for Pakistan. Sorry, Shaista, I'll, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Thaki, for giving us a comprehensive outline of what PMC, uh, the structure is, what the plans are, what the um, methodology is behind the registration and uh, setting up some standards. And thank you very much for talking with us as the president and as a colleague, much appreciated. Thank you for making us feel part of it. Um, just wanted to say to the viewers, there are 5,000 hits on our live Facebook stream, so please do share it. Um, a lot of doctors uh, will benefit from this particular symposium and there are questions coming at us thick and fast, so we will try and answer most of these. Um, Dr. Abdul Hafiz is gonna talk about the role of APPS and the collaboration we can, um, we can offer along in the similar vein that Dr. Um, Mr. Puri was saying. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, I really thank uh, um, Dr. Shataki um, to accept um, the request by our president. Um, obviously this is the time uh, then obviously use the resource of Pakistani doctors who are working all over the world 
uh, but our hearts do beat with Pakistan and we want to do uh, much more. We have come from Pakistan, graduated from there, and the skills we have learned over here, um, they are all transferable, or most of them are transferable. We have people working in very high positions within uh, UK and other countries. Um, altogether, there are 12,000 Pakistani doctors who are registered with uh, General Medical Council at this uh, very time. And another 16,000 in America. And if we take into account Australia and Middle Eastern countries, there'll be another 10,000. So it's like a 40, 45,000 doctors resource, which is available for Pakistan. It's a matter of you know, making the bridges and making those pathways where um, the, this resource can be used. Apps UK has been working for last 16 years. And when we launched this organization, at that time, there were very limited help available for Pakistani doctors in the UK. But these days, obviously, uh, the network is um, becoming bigger and more powerful. And we have much more say even within the NHS system because our uh, clinicians are making a huge difference and they, ha they are creating uh, the pathways and so on. So what I would suggest is because we face so much difficulty in terms of when we interact with our regulator in Pakistan, um, you know, because if we make a phone call or uh, send an email, it's quite, it has been quite difficult to keep up with our registration. So if PMDC actually makes this process very easy and electronic, I think most of the people in UK, most of the doctors here would like to continue their registration in Pakistan. So with this new digital world, we can actually easily um, you know, treat patients even from here based on our registration with PMDC and obviously regulated through that process. I know it's a little bit of challenging area as well you know, to develop those uh, you know, legal frameworks where doctors sitting anywhere in the world registered with GMs with PMDC can treat a patient and is obviously legally uh, responsible for the care provided as well. But that actually means the deficiency of doctors or brain drain, which you have talked, we actually can use that. Second point, um, which we feel obviously PMDC has to look into is defining what is a specialist in Pakistan. I mean, when we go to Pakistan, uh, we see every single doctor writing, I'm a specialist in skin care, I'm a specialist in pediatrics, I'm a specialist in different areas. But if we actually look at their qualifications, they might have just done a house job, which actually affects the patient, um, you know, trust in a system. And the regulator has to, you know, define it and actually value the actual people who have done FCPS, who have done the hard work that their effort has to be recognized in a way that the, the, the public can trust them uh, and the doctors can feel um, you know, honored in terms of uh, achieving those qualifications. Um, there is another issue uh, which we sometimes face. Uh, you know, at the moment, if, uh, because there is a very big Pakistani community living in UK and my own children are going to medical school, they were born in UK. And I know PMDC or PMC accept the registration of GMC for the doctors who qualified within UK. However, this does not apply to dentists. If a dentist born in UK graduated from a UK medical school um, or dental school, when they go to Pakistan, PMC or previous PMDC did not have any uh, collaboration with the general dental council, which is separate to GMC. Obviously, this is another waste of resource uh, which, which can be easily used. Previously, uh, obviously, when we go to Pakistan or our surgeons or our clinicians go to Pakistan uh, on a holiday, they would like to spend that time or at least maybe a day or two in terms of teaching, training, or even treating patients uh, or doing surgeries. Uh, but if this registration is in place, um, obviously, it will be much easy for those doctors rather than at that time thinking, I need the registration and process is so long that Obviously, by the time that registration you know, come through, it will be another few months and the doctor is back. And, and, it, and obviously they cannot really deliver what they should be delivering. And I'm, I'm sure there are many people who, who are actually uh, willing to work. Last point, I think it is time for PMC to enforce. Uh, I don't know how much you guys can do, 
compulsory medical records for the standards um, which our patient deserve. I know there are some hospitals with excellent medical records, but none of them exist in primary care. I think you, uh, I think if you can lead us into uh, enforcing this process where at each stage, primary care, secondary care, a medical record is kept and there are strategies which perhaps UK can actually um, you know, help uh, and devise those uh, systems. Uh, because once doctor has written, uh, you know, a particular, uh, you know, findings and why a decision is made, only then somebody else can go and check whether correct decision was made or if there was any issues in terms of quality of care. And I know a lot of panelists, so I will stop here. Thank you very much for your time, and I really appreciate um, uh, your your uh, your assistance uh, in terms of uh, you know delivering a better patient care for Pakistan. Thank you. So, Thank you very much, and it's wonderful. Do, 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 do I respond to that? So can I? So, so first thing, uh, just in response to that uh, earlier suggestion, Dr. Dr. Puri's, uh, I just cite Section Eight Q, which says the the which talking about the powers of the commission. The commission has the power to constitute from amongst its members or outside experts, such committees as the council deems necessary to carry, carry out its purpose and functions of the, of the commission. So that is well within our power. It does not specify that this, they have to be experts from within or nationals or what. So experts are experts. So that, that, that is something that is well within the, within the law. So uh, that should not be something which is beyond the law. So coming back, the I think four things that you raised uh, require about re recognition. And uh, just if you give me just two minutes, what we, our biggest problem was that uh, our previous system was that uh, every patient, uh, every person who, uh, required a license, whether they had done their graduate degree from abroad or their postgraduate training from abroad and uh, and acquired a, a degree or a fellowship certification, had to apply as, as an individual. And every case was then assessed individually. The students coming from any medical college, anywhere undergraduate, who were in the WHO HO list of directory of colleges, which is another joke, could come and appear in a national equivalence board exam and then get a, get a license to practice. Though that three-step exam with a 10% pass, pass percentage. And I have met come across students who have been there for 10 years appearing in that exam and still haven't managed their license. But then they are students, they are colleges, they, we unearthed college, which had 2,000 students per class, a total of 10,000 colleges, and a, uh, and a college which was situated in the second floor of a building. So, so that was the, was the kind of colleges we had to weed out. We have started preparing a list on a defined criteria of undergraduate institutes, which are to be recognized, and also postgraduate degrees, which we recognize. So anyone, those we recognize the degrees and not the individual entertain the individual application. So if you're coming from UK and you're, it's recognized, so you just need to, there's, there's a form that we have just posted, which is a very simple form. Then you just get your license or your renewal. So that's something that we're working on as soon as the system is automated. Our IT people say 45 days, we, are, we think I'll be more generous and say take it 90 days. But if you can get us automated and everything online in 90 days, we, I'll be the happiest person on the earth. But that's where we are heading. That's where our IT people say they are head taking us. Regarding the, uh, regarding the specialization and the issue of specialists. So if you look at our fresh renewals, we are only renewing the licenses now for two years. And we have already posted on our website that in those these two years, we are aiming to shift from renewal to revalidation. So it's we are not we are not going to be just happy with somebody getting a degree and then just uh, getting it renewed every five years or 10 years and just paying us a fee for 
certifying this something about which we are not even informed whether this person is still a competent clinician or not. The, our next aim is to move from, from actually revalidation and move towards credentialing instead of just blanket specialization. So a urologist may be a urologist, a trained urologist, but is that urologist also a transplant surgeon? For today, any urologist can go and start, start performing transplants. Or any cardiologist can go and start performing interventions. So this is where credentialing needs to come in because with the way the, the pace at which technology is advancing, we cannot leave this technology in the hand of untrained people. It's going to threaten, their life, uh, uh, threaten people's lives. So we need to move towards credentialing. And that's where we are moving. So th these are those areas because as I said earlier, we'd have to restore the, and retain the trust of the society. A doctor who says I'm this needs to then demonstrate that this person is competent. About the people coming in for limited period, of course, Pakistanis coming in who already hold a license can go on and do. But if you want a temporary registration for anyone, for any purpose who's come here for the purpose of teaching, once again, we've simplified the form. We have taken a lot of redundancy on already from the forms. So what we could do at the first step was simplify the form. So if you go on the website and compare the forms that they, we have put up now, they will, they are just one pages, most of them, instead of those 20, 10 pages that you had to fill, most of those useless uh, things. So we are only asking for the essential information, which gives us the proof that we require. Uh, once again, electronic medical records, we would love to have them. And I was just proposing to someone that we need to get them first on the teaching hospitals because that's where we need a proof that they are actually having the patients that we require for the purpose of teaching. That's a problem that, that uh, I, I can tell you a few very good IT companies have developed extremely good EMRs here. The hospitals would not take them, particularly in the private sector. The issue is your taxation. Uh, and that's where probably that can only be implemented through the FPR and everybody then chipping in. But yes, that's that's where we, we need. So, Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, during this discussion, we are um, answering a lot of questions um, and we are overwhelmed with the uh, comments and shares. Thank you very much viewers and participants for engaging with us and um, asking all those questions. Dr. Fan and Dr. Liz are working hard in the background trying to categorize these. So we'll move on to our panelists. Um, I'll invite Dr. Ashfaq Ahmed, who is a consultant emergency medicine um, in London, UK. Dr. Hi, uh, hi. Uh, first of all, I'm really, 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 really thankful um, to, to APAS for inviting me on this wonderful uh, event. Uh, I would like to say thank you to President for uh, giving such a, um, you know, it has uh, eliminated a lot of misconceptions which we were having. Um, uh, of course, PMC is going to be having a big challenge uh, because we know that Pakistan is the, uh, is one of the among few uh, countries which is producing the highest number of medical graduates. Uh, and uh, most of the countries, you know, in America, USA, UK, we have Pakistani doctors working in, in in every single hospital. So I would like to just talk about, because my background is uh, teaching and training. Uh, I've trained more than 5,000 medical graduates in the United Kingdom. Um, and I can talk about the problems they are having. And I would like uh, President, Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Arshad Taki to please take a note of these important issues. Um, first of all, I would like to give my example. Uh, I came to UK in 2008 and uh, uh, in 2008, I decided that in 2018, I'll go back to my country after getting a qualification. And that's what I did. By the end of 2018, I moved my family, I moved my kids. Um, I, I just resigned from my job in UK and I went to Pakistan. Uh, fortunately, we were offered a job, me and my wife both were offered a job in one of the biggest tertiary care hospital of Pakistan as the in charge of the emergency medicine. But uh, one of the uh, conditions for that was to 
we have to be a specialist registration with uh, PFDC. Uh, and of course, we were eligible to get the specialist registration, but all this happened and all of a sudden the PMDC stopped working and PMC uh, uh, came into being. It's been more than one year now. We did wait for almost a year and uh, unfortunately there was no movement and we couldn't uh, get the specialist registration. Um, and finally, I had to move my family back after one and a half year. So we did wait for 18 months to serve country and we just winded up, we risked our careers in pocket in UK just to serve our country. Um, but unfortunately, due to this problem, we couldn't uh, survive. You know, it was really difficult for us. Um, I was going to and fro to UK for, to, you know, to do the locums. So here I would like to say, if you have any uh, foreign graduates or trained doctor who wants to come back and serve to Pakistan, I would like PMC to please help and facilitate them so smoothly that you know their jobs are done within days, maybe weeks or months. Uh, please don't delay that because when we come from, uh, you know, when we leave UK USA, you can imagine what we, what are we risking? We are risking our careers. We are risking our kids' life. So any overseas trained doctor, if, you, if they want to come back to Pakistan, uh, please facilitate them and do as much as you can do and as smoothly you can do. The second point I would like to make is uh, all the international medical graduates who are working in, um, uh, you know, who are, uh, who wanted to come to United Kingdom, they passed the PLEB exam and they're still waiting for good standing certificate. Um, it's very difficult for them uh, to survive in the United Kingdom uh, without money, without financial backup. And you know how difficult it is to get the visa. Once they go back to their homeland, it's very hard for them to come back. And I've seen hundreds and thousands of doctors returning back home because they couldn't get the good standing certificate. And by the time they got the good standing certificate, their English exams got expired. And now it's hard for them to do the English exam because GMC will ask them again to do the English exam. So please, I know there's a long list of, uh, uh, there's a long list of things uh, in your you know, to-do list, but I think those who are in overseas, um, foreign medical graduates, international graduates, please look after them. They are your asset. Uh, third thing I would like to say, those who are going to Russia, China, Kazakhstan, um, or any private university from Pakistan. Uh, I know there, there are, it's hard for PMDC or PMC to regulate, to find out what type of university is this. But I would still say those who are already in the pipeline, those who have already left the country, uh, please don't, yeah, still give them a chance to appear in NLE. Let them prove, let them give a chance. Otherwise they will say uh, they aren't in second year MBBS, they aren't third year MBBS and all of a sudden they will know that, oh, PMDC is not going to recognize or PMC is not going to recognize the university. This would be very unfair for them. And uh, third thing I would like to say, um, as a PMC uh, president, it will be a huge responsibility on your shoulder. You have to make things fair for everyone. Uh, fair means uh, whoever is graduating now, uh, you know, when you're implementing an NLE, please do it in a way that it should not affect the timeline of any doctor who was already graduating or he's under the, you know, he's in final year MBBS. Uh, we have a UK MLA uh, coming up in United Kingdom in 2022, uh, but they announced in 2014. So they gave a sufficient time for the graduates to, you know, medical students to think about it. And I think NLE is a very good step, which, will improve emergency, you know, all, all the services in Pakistan and the quality of doctors. But implementing all of a sudden, this will just displace 20,000, 50,000 doctors all of a sudden. So please introduce it in a way that maybe, I don't want PMC to wait for eight years because I know in Pakistan things change so quickly, but give them two, three years time, uh, let them plan, let them make, make their, you know, uh, things clear for them and so that they can appear. So this way you can treat everyone fairly. Um, now, uh, other important thing I would like to say um, from our perspective, like as a doctor working in Pakistan or as a doctor working in GMC, I would like to talk, I'll give an example of General Medical Council. 
as a doctor, we don't really care who is governing the General Medical Council. Is it the Queen? Is it the uh, Parliament? Or is it the Armed Forces? Or government body? Or we really don't care who is uh, governing the PMC or PMDC or GMC. All we want is a very fair system where everyone should be uh, included and everyone should get an opportunity to, to you know, give back to their country. Those who left for Russia, those who are leaving for China, they are spending their own money. They're not getting money from Pakistan government. It's your asset, it's Pakistan asset. If there may be some deficiencies, they can improve by doing some courses. Like GMC is recognizing 160 medical colleges of Pakistan. They don't know who are those medical colleges, but they take an exam, PLEB exam, where if anyone can pass the exam, they can work and practice in um, uh, United Kingdom. So I think uh, most of the things being told by all the senior members um, and uh, Dr. Taki has made things really, really clear for us that what are their aims? How are they going to achieve it? In the last, I would like to say only one thing, which I think I wasn't planning to say, is about the emergency medicine. I would request PMC to please recognize member Royal College of Emergency Medicine as a specialist degree, because India, Pakistan, all other countries, MOH, Dubai, UAE, everyone recognize MRCM as a specialist degree like MRCP. With this degree, we can have thousands of doctors who can, uh, emergency physician who can work as an emergency consultant in Pakistan. Uh, so far, we have only eight or nine MR came in Pakistan. And I can just tell you that India is producing 2,000, 200, 300 every month, every year. So we, have, we are lagging far behind. It's just because if the PMC or PMDC recognizes MR came as a specialist degree, then you can have hundreds of emergency physicians will be coming to you and uh, serving their country. Thank you very much for Thank giving you. me this opportunity. I'm really grateful to all of you, Apas. I'm really grateful to uh, Dr. Taki, Dr. Shaista for listening to me. And I hope I made my point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Shfaq Ahmed, for raising those pertinent points. Dr. Taki, if I can go straight on to the next panelist before we come back to the questions. Thank you very much. Um, I'll talk to you about Urdu. I have a little change. I have a lot of viewers. I mean, we have a we are engaged Our next panelist is Dr. Abdurrahman Shahid, who is an emergency care specialist in Frankfurt, Germany. He will talk to us some about the points. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us to Dr. Taki. I will conclude on the topics. We have talked about the Shkil Puri, Abdul Hafiz, Rashwag Bhai, we have talked about problems that we have in our circuit. तो मैं ये कहना चाहूंगा कि जब यूके का आप देखते हैं तो यूरोप को भी आप उसमें हमेशा याद रखा करें जिसमें जर्मनी नॉर्वे स्वीडन डेनमार्क स्पेन स्विट्जरलैंड ऑस्ट्रिया इनमें बहुत ज्यादा पाकिस्तानी डॉक्टर्स हैं जो काम कर रहे हैं और मेरे साथ टच में है वो तो ये डॉक्टर्स भी पाकिस्तान आके तो वो خدمت करना चाहते हैं और जो टेक्नोलॉजी उसको पाकिस्तान में ट्रांसफर करना चाहते हैं जर्मनी का जैसा कि आपने देखा कि कोरोना टाइम में भी उन्होंने बहुत अच्छा वर्कआउट किया और बहुत कम पेशेंट्स की डेथ हुई जर्मनी के अंदर तो मेरी बड़ी ख्वाहिश है कि इमरजेंसी ट्रॉमा जो सिस्टम है इसको पाकिस्तान में हम ट्रांसफर करें अब मैं बिल्कुल कंक्लूजन पर इस बात की आऊंगा वो मैं ये कहना चाहूंगा कि पीएमसी के लिए हम क्या कर सकते हैं एज ए ओवरसीज प्रोफेशनल या ओवरसीज डॉक्टर्स क्योंकि मेरे साथ काफी ज्यादा लोग मुंसलिक हैं उसमें यूरोपियन साइंटिस्ट भी हैं डॉक्टर्स भी हैं आईटी कंसलटेंट्स भी हैं इंजीनियर्स भी हैं तो हम सब मिलकर कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि हम पाकिस्तान के सिस्टम को बेटर करें और ऑफ कोर्स मैं एक डॉक्टर हूं तो मेरी सबसे पहली ख्वाहिश यह है कि हम पाकिस्तान के हेल्थ सिस्टम को बेटर करें इस वक्त तो उसमें मेरे ख्याल में हम पीएमसी के साथ मिलकर एक यूरोपियन एक्सपर्ट्स और प्रोफेशनल्स एक प्रोजेक्ट्स को डेवलप कर सकते हैं एज अ जॉइंट स्टडी ग्रुप ऑन डिफरेंट इश्यूज और उसके अंदर हम गैप एनालिसिस को जो उनसे वो अप्रोच करेंगे और हम उसके अंदर नॉलेज बेस्ड और साइंटिफिक बेस्ड मेथड्स को यूज करेंगे जिसके साथ हम जो पाकिस्तान में गैप्स हैं और जो मिसिंग चीजें हैं उसको हम पूरा कर सकते हैं तो पीएमसी कैन प्ले अ बेटर इफेक्टिव रोल ऑफ हेल्थ सिस्टम रिवाइवल इन फ्यूचर सो देयर आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स 
joint study groups, PMC experts, and European experts, including UK, and applying right methods for mapping, interventions, research, and development. So these two points are very important, I think, uh, to find a real solution of this problem. And we need to I mean, sab logon ko use karna chahiye ki jo bhi pakistan ke doctors hain aur wo pakistan aake apne ek cardiologist hai wo germany ka wo technology pakistan transfer karna chahta hai hum usko help out karna chahiye ek trauma surgeon hai wo agar transfer karna chahta hai usko hum help out karna chahiye is tarah different countries ka different system hai aur uske zariye hum pakistan mein ek better system create kar sakte hain to mere khayal mein ये मच नीडेड है और यूरोप के जो डॉक्टर्स हैं उनको भी इसमें लाजमी आप रखें जैसे बीडीएस का हफीज साहब ने बताया कि बीडीएस के डॉक्टर्स जो बॉर्न है वहां के उनका लाइसेंस रिकग्नाइज नहीं होता इसी तरह यूरोपियन जो डॉक्टर्स हैं जो पाकिस्तानी बॉर्न जर्मन डॉक्टर्स या पाकिस्तानी बॉर्न यूरोपियन डॉक्टर्स दे आर ऑल्सो नॉट रिकग्नाइज इन पाकिस्तान सो इसलिए उनको बहुत परेशानियों का सामना करना पड़ता है एक डॉक्टर को मैं पर्सनली जानता हूँ जो टू ईयर्स से बेचारे पाकिस्तान में बहुत प्रॉब्लम उनको हुई है तो इस तरह वो लोग डिस्करेज होते हैं और फिर वो वहां पर नहीं आना चाहेंगे पाकिस्तान में तो बस मेरी तरफ यही बात थी थैंक यू वेरी मच एक मैं सिर्फ बता दूं कि जो उन कंट्रीज को जिनके लाइसेंस को हम रेकग्नाइज करते हैं अब उसके ऊपर हमने ये कर रहे हैं कि वहां का जो लाइसेंस होल्डर है वो यहाँ आके स्ट्रेट लाइसेंस ले सकते हैं वो अगर अगर कोई जर्मन जर्मन है ही इज जर्मन सिट नेशनल पाकिस्तान का कोई तालुक नहीं इफ ही डिसाइड्स टू कम एंड लिव एंड वर्क इन पाकिस्तान एंड इज गॉट अ लाइसेंस इन जर्मनी वी विल गिव हिम अ लाइसेंस ओके सो थैंक यू दैट्स अ ग्रेट न्यूज़ सो एंड अबाउट द डेंटिस्ट वंस अगेन डॉक्टर अनीस रहमान हु इज द द डेंटिस्ट ऑन आवर ऑन द ऑन द काउंसिल इज ऑलरेडी प्रिपेयरिंग अ लिस्ट ऑफ ऑल दोस क्वालिफिकेशंस which okay. will automatically stand recognized for dental qualifications okay great thank so, you uh, uh, we'll go on to discussion and q a and a session now so dr fan and dr ali raza will um, start that thank you there's so many questions i don't know where to start to be honest uh, and i, I think, lost a track think, of those questions ji i think i think um, we we never um, you know comprehended the interest which this particular topic has generated um, i can see there are i think 20, 21 questions in front of us here and there are many more i think the facebook live stream is creating a lot more interest as well it seems we may not have time to go through all of them maybe one or two questions but maybe we can plan another session um because this is really inspiring in terms of uh, um you know the you know people always wanted a bridge of, of overseas doctors and pakistani doctors and our regulator in pakistan and this modern world we are in i think it is now easy and i'm sure dr taki Uh, at at a future convenient time maybe whenever um, possible may come back and we will take all those questions in more detail but if we can just you know quickly take one or two question each uh, two from here and two whatever you feel are more appropriate then we will not go too far in terms of over timing yeah i think that the most important many people ask questions uh, the fmg foreign medical graduates who's coming which you shwak uh, bhai already touched a uh, point uh, what are your views they some people have done the step i think nab step 1 they don't know what to do next and also they asked uh, uh, they partially they have passed the exam so where they stand what are your views on it so interestingly so i have had more meetings i have spent more time with foreign medical graduates during last two weeks than with any member of my family any friend any even everybody put together so they've come i've they've seen uh, they have actually uh, met them on uh, outside of the lawn all of them crowding me in the office everywhere and we we've, we've given them what we the proposal is and by and large i haven't seen anyone saying no this is not acceptable so we said that the, we are going to look at and here is the list of criteria first the college from which you graduated the graduates of those colleges a were eligible for a license in that country us college se jo bachcha padha hai agar wo us call us country ke andar kehta hai ki ji main pass ho gaya hu mujhe license de de 
तो वो कंट्री उस कॉलेज को लाइसेंस दे देती है क्योंकि हमें ये पता चला कि कुछ कॉलेजेस ऐसे बने हैं कि जिनको उस मुल्क में भी रिकोगनाइज ही नहीं किया जाता वो सिर्फ पाकिस्तान को डिग्री देने के लिए बने सो दैट्स द फर्स्ट थिंग वी नीड टू फिल्टर दैट आई एम सॉरी अगर हम सबके हार्ट भी ब्लीड करें तो आई हैव टू टेक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी क्या आप किसी लॉ ग्रेजुएट आके कहे कि अब मैं एनी पास करता हूँ तो क्या आप उसे बोर्ड का इम्तान दे देंगे that's that's something that we needs to and there there we need to draw a line i'm sorry some of them may be innocent but then there are few who knew what they were doing sir main aapko aapas mein bataun ki humne kuch logon ke visas check karaye immigration se you know what their travel history was for the 5 years they had traveled for a total of 7 days outside pakistan ab aap usko degree denge so you need to have set some criteria ab wo criteria ab wo ab hum ye bhi kar sakte hain ki ye acha ab to wo pass ho ke aage ab usko de de but would you still say not say ke pass hua hai kaise hua hai so a pehla second their graduates that medical college had an affiliated hospital which is recognized or trained so first their degree is recognized in the native country their doctors are eligible for license in that or graduates of that college are eligible for license in that native country three the hospital where they that they were that teaching hospital is recognized by that regulatory authority for post graduate training and training and there are a couple of others that that program was a five years program so there are six or seven steps we are seeking that information not from the colleges बिकॉज मैं आपको वो जो सारा प्रोसेस था उसको भी अगर मैं आपको इस वक्त डिटेल टाइम नहीं है डिटेल बनाने का किसी वक्त बताऊंगा कि सिस्टम वाज सो फ्लॉड कि आप एक कॉलेज से डिग्री लेके आए हैं फिर वही कॉलेज सर्टिफाई कर रहा है कि ये हमारी डिग्री है और हम कह रहे हैं चलो अच्छी बड़ी बात है अब हमने सर्टिफाई करा लिया सो वी आर आस्किंग द एम्बेसी टू क्लियर वेरीफाई दिस लिस्ट ऑफ कॉलेज हमारे पास अपना डेटा भी आ रहा है हमने लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स का नैप उस एग्जाम का पूरा डेटा निकाल दिया हर कॉलेज से कितने बच्चे आए कितनों ने इम्तान दिए कितने पास हुए सो वी वर्किंग ऑन दैट एंड इन शाह वी थिंक इन सिक्स टू सिक्स टू एट वीक्स हम उनको कर लेंगे अब वो बच्चे कहते हैं जी हमने इम्तहान दिया है हमने दो स्टेप किए हैं मैंने उस दिन उनको बिठा के दिखाया था मैंने कहा ये तुम्हारा डेटा है उनमें से हर बच्चा वो इम्तहान चार चार दफा दे चुका है फेल हो चुका है ठीक मेजॉरिटी आपके बच्चे जो हैं उन्होंने चार चार पांच पांच अटैम्प्ट्स में वो इम्तहान पास किया जब आप डाटा निकालते हैं देखते हैं मैंने कहा जी अगर आप चाहते हो कि हम आपको एक अटैम्प्ट और दे दें और किसी तरह लॉ को किसी तरह करके तो भाई तुम्हारा टेन परसेंट पास होने का चांस है सो आई यू हैप्पी कि हम तुम्हारे कॉलेज को रिकगनाइज करके तुम्हें ब्लैंकेट पाकिस्तानी ग्रेजुएट की तरह ट्रीट करके तुम्हें प्रोविजनल लाइसेंस दे दें तुम हाउस जॉब करो वो एम एल दो जो कि पाकिस्तानी ग्रेजुएट देंगे हाँ अलबत् आप लोगों के लिए हम एक एडिशनल टेस्ट रखेंगे एंड दैट वुड बी स्किल्स क्योंकि हमें नहीं पता कि वहाँ हाउस पर तो सिक्स स्किल्स का हम आपके लिए टेस्ट करना आपको रखेंगे बट दैट इज ऑल यू विल बी अपेयरिंग फॉर द सेम एग्जाम दैट पाकिस्तानी ग्रेजुएट्स आर अपेयरिंग सो so, ये हमने उनको कहा एंड जिसने से भी जो भी हमारे पास आए हैं सबने कहा कि सूसा हमें बस आप ये दे दें बिकॉज देर इज दो फाइव और सिक्स और टेन स्टूडेंट्स और टू और थ्री परसेंट और माइंड यू सर वो दस दस साल से इम्तहान दे रहे और वो उन कॉलेज से आए हुए हैं जो सबसे ज्यादा शोर मचा रहे हैं सो कॉन्टेक्स्ट देख लीजिएगा बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट वॉन्ट और हमने एक बड़ा सिंपल हम ये यार्ड स्टिक देते हैं जो भी आता है मैं उसे कहता हूँ कि मैं इस डॉक्टर का आपको रिकॉर्ड दे देता हूँ आप अपने किसी डियर वन को इससे ट्रीट करवाएंगे अगर नहीं करवाएंगे तो फिर मुझे ना कहें इसको लाइसेंस दो सो दैट्सिंग हार्ट आई कैन रिश्योर यू दैट सर uh well i have lot of questions so most important questions what would what would be the frequency of nle exams a like plab exam is conducted four times a year probably yes. we are looking at four times a year okay that's we are looking at and and uh, like we 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 would actually loud thinking we could actually be asking gmc plab to say 
okay would you be interested in holding your exam in pakistan where we have a, i mean just loud thinking where you have a different cut off we have a different cut off and if our students have passed that exam and they have reached your cut off you don't have to ask for another exam that would I mean, be that's it that, that's that's something that we need to sell to our graduates but that is something that we should be looking at we should be thinking about that the licensing bodies because see remember sir if jab aap in response to that question ke aap unko zyada time de sir we are looking at 2023 wherein famer ecfmg have actually put our registration on the hold we are on temporary hold if we do not come up with something which shows that we are provide, providing sustainable quality we will our graduates will no longer be eligible will be out of that directory we need to do this before 2023 sir that's our problem okay second question is is there any plan to streamline nle with post graduate entrance exams because students doctors are saying that there are so many exams in pakistan see the problem is uh, if this is aligned with that entrance exam then be maybe thinking but for that see we have got two pathways at this moment we are trying to work out a connect between cpsp and universities and form some kind of a a a, a, a common curriculum and everything however then that exam would become a tough exam because that would involve then basic sciences as well because if once again loud thinking if we our nle is kind of geared towards just a certaining one thing is this person a safe doctor and we stay stop start from there and then we raise the bar till the time we reach that plap level so at this point in time we need just need to ensure that they get used to a common exam which at least ensures that they are safe doctors i mean i'm 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 not talking about curriculum because that's for the board to decide but that's the way we need to look at because then that exam exam would become a tough exam and people may not get their licenses then remember aapka fcps part 1 ka pass percentage 20% hai pichle 20 saal se 20% so agar hum aisa ibtan de denge to wo 80% jo fcps part 1 mein fail ho rahe hain unko license bhi nahi milega so there are two you remember get the disconnect so just continuing this uh, as you mentioned ki fmg ka jo hai wo 10% result aata hai fcps 1 ka 20% result aata hai people are thinking that for in nle again percentages would be same and this would be a disaster what is your take so would we be actually looking at a disaster jahan pe ke 12000 bachcha uh, uh, mbbs karke baitha hai aur hum unme se 1200 ko license de denge exactly to so, that is harakiri for us i mean we we are just trying to ensure, ensure something we are just trying to ensure that they they are those basic parameters that they have reached that basic minimum competence and remember sir they are graduates from punjab they are graduates from rajasthan they are graduates from sem from kpk remote areas we we are, we are not looking at failing people we are looking at just ascertaining a few basic things just the, so that then the universities then begin to realize that they cannot get away with this they have to produce some quality the medical colleges need to realize this sir hum unko wahan nahi pakad wahan nahi pakdenge to kahin nahi pakad sakte aapko this is reassuring doctor okay, very quick time. question ali before Thank you me. conclude uh, anything uh, uh, dr taki you planning to do regarding medical college admission test exam so wo to abhi ho raha hai na is the fault well, any any people are saying uh, uh, about the loss of improve, improvements needs doing in that exam like you doing other improvement yes. other areas yes uh, yes uh, yes we 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 had this meeting and interestingly our uh, experts who in chemistry from kpk was there and he said ke yaar aap to doctor banana chahte ho aap itne aasan sawal kyun puchte ho on the other hand hame आपको पता है कि सिंध की छह यूनिवर्सिटीज ने हाई कोर्ट में रेट की कि इन्होंने इस एमडी कैट की पास परसेंटेज 60 परसेंट की है कोर्ट को और ने कहा को कहा गया कि इनको ऑर्डर किया गया है कि उसको 33 परसेंट दे करें एंट्रेंस क्राइटेरिया को जिस पे कोर्ट ऑफ कोर्स डिड नॉट अलाउ देम दिस बट सी पॉइंट इज दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रेज द बार डोंट ट्राई रेजिंग इट द बार टू हाई इन वन ईयर 
we we need to we need to also realize that these these children are coming through a system which has prepared them to a certain level and that level can only gradually be improved can i ask one question um sure sure uh, it's very simple is pmc issuing good standing certificate now or what is the matter yes. because yes, uh, in in my in my previous experience i had to send someone to islamabad to collect the pmdc certificate so so do cheeze badi interesting main batata hu ek humne ye kiya hai ke parso ab pehli jab mere student tha to president arif alvi ka ek adc aaya usne kaha ki ji president sahab ka renewal aaya hai तो उनको मुझे बाय हैंड में ले लेके जाना है तो आई सेड के आई नो ऑफ ओनली वन डॉक्टर आरिफ अलवी एंड दैट ही इज अ डेंटल सर्जन इन कराची और उनका जो लाइसेंस बना है वो कराची उनके एड्रेस पे जाएगा कॉरियर के थ्रू जाएगा किसी के हाथ में नहीं जाएगा सो अल्टीमेटली हाफ एन आवर लेटर वी हैड अ कॉम्प्रोमाइज हमने कहा कि ऐसे करो आप इस्लामाबाद का कोई एड्रेस दे दो उस पर कॉरियर करेंगे आपके हाथ में नहीं जाएगा तो सो so, अब हमने एक किया कि हमने कहा है कि कोई बंदा कोई सर्टिफिकेट किसी बंदे के हाथ में नहीं पकड़ाया जाए इट गोज थ्रू अ कॉरियर सेकेंड फ्राइडे को जब मैं शाम को निकला था तो मुझे इन्फॉर्म कर दिया गया था कि जितने पेंडिंग गुड स्टैंडिंग थे वो हमने निकाल दी है मंडे बैक एंड कंफर्म कि कोई रह नहीं गया मैं रैंडम खुद भी चेक कर रहा हूँ और हमने उस दिन हमने खुद बिठा के उनको कहा था कि जितने गुड स्टैंडिंग पेंडिंग है सेकेंड वेरिफिकेशन थी वो credentialing ke department we set up the department we have written to all the regulatory authorities gmc australia ecfmg aur unko keh diya hai ke ji aap is address pe credentialing pe aap email kare and within 24 hours we will send you the the, the. So, third thing good standing mein hamari website pe humne pehle bhi dal diya tha so ab hum dobara i think do teen dino mein activate wo ho jayega कि यू कैन जस्ट गो पुट लॉग इन एंड फाइंड आउट कि जी मेरा गुड स्टैंडिंग है कि नहीं दैट्स वेयर वी आर टेकिंग कि अब आपको वहां से नहीं बट रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटीज को क्रेडेंशियलिंग सो दैट्स दैट्स समथिंग दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्ट दैट्स दैट्स क्वाइट रीअश्योरिंग एंड आई नो वी आर रनिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम आई थिंक माय क्वेश्चन वाज मिस्ड जब मैंने बात की थी मोर इंटरेस्टिंग इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वाज रिगार्डिंग द एमआरसीएम आर यू थिंकिंग ऑफ गेटिंग इट स्पेशलिस्ट रजिस्टर्ड लाइक P M R C P because I have done both the exams and I can assure you that M R C M is surely a difficult exam than M R C P. So, ah, uh, your because because without that, you can't improve medicine in Pakistan. So, what is your best option? So, first of all, I have to say that 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 रिकग्नेशन मेडिकल अथॉरिटी की रिकमेंडेशन पे होगी या मेडिकल बोर्ड की आई एग्री विद यू एंड आई फुली एग्री एंड वी नीड टू मेक मेक अ केस एंड से के जी ये इसमें होना चाहिए और इसको उस लिस्ट में जाना चाहिए बट एज आई सेट वी आर ऑलरेडी वी स्टार्टेड वर्किंग ऑन इट वी आर नॉट मेकिंग डिसीजन बिकॉज काउंसिल इज नॉट सपोज बी मेकिंग दिस डिसीजन काउंसिल इज गोइंग टू बी अप्रूविंग अथॉरिटी दिस इज जस्ट एन इंटरम पीरियड the board is expected to be announced as soon as they say within a week we have already placed ad, ads for the member positions and they will come and they take charge of so licensing becomes the goes under the member licensing and they are the ones who do this so we are actually i won't be trying to do their job what we can do is that we can request you send us the material we forward it to those people and say okay, we want a report on this as soon as possible so that we a decision can be made on this that's so we are here to here to facilitate the decisions that's good thank you very much thank, thank you very much and dr said ali is is going to announce next uh, symposium yeah yes we have some interesting symposium uh, on our way on 25th october we will have uh, dr uh, faisal sultan federal health minister with us on 1st november we will conduct a session on cv writing on interview skills and visa application for the uk and on 15th november we will uh, have a session on plab symposium i uh, just want to say one more thing dr ashataki this session was really reassuring for our doctors they were frustrated they were confused and i think after this session 
many things are very much clear and the trust of the doctors on the new TMC must have restored now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I think uh, I'm there. Uh, you can write to me, you can send me an email. So uh, I'll try my best to respond to you now. Thank you, Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Puri is going to conclude the today's symposium now. Thank you very much, everybody who took part to arrange this. I'm very thankful to Mr. President, uh, Dr. Ashit Taki, for his very valuable time. Uh, I must say there are well above 10,000 people who reached and watched us in many, many countries. Uh, uh, Mr. President, we are very thankful once again for illuminating and taking your t this time to clarify many, many uh, things in our minds and our members' minds. Uh, I will be writing to you uh, formally with regards to how we can come and assist you uh, on a formal basis. Uh, thank you very much for your communication since you become the president. We've been talking on a uh, regular basis and thank you for listening and implementing uh, such a streamlined and easier system uh, for example, the portal and the online registration and making the good standing certificate very accessible. We will be in touch. We will be communicating on one last request. Alhamdulillah, we are very blessed to have a, a man of your caliber leading PMC. Please, I know you want to do a lot in a very short period of time. Do look after yourself. Do look after your family and your health. And inshallah, we will be in touch. Thank you all. My wife is listening. <laughs> thank you very, <laughs> very good. Sir. Behind yeah, every successful man, there is a lady. So thank you to Bhabi yeah. for you know supporting you <laughs> once again. And inshallah, uh, we will be in touch. <laughs> to all my um, team and the viewers all across the world, thank you very much for your time and listening. Please do share these valuable thoughts of Mr. President all across your uh, circ social circuits. And inshallah, until the next time, uh, Khuda Hafiz and Jazakallah. Thank you. Thank you very much.